Well, look at this. Look at this. This is a, a rare commodity in the Zenity workshop. Very rare. It's called space. I've actually made some room. And what's happened? Well, regular viewers will know what was sitting on here originally for a while. That little 7x12 Sumor mini lane. And I sold it this morning. It's gone. To a nice young guy that bought it. He's a uh, an apprentice. And uh, he was looking for one of those. And he was also a guy that made his own aluminium, melted his own aluminium, so I was pretty pleased to hear that. So now we've got room. What are we going to do with it? Well, I would dearly love a mill, but that's really the wrong sort of configuration to put a mill because it's it should be bold to the floor if it's going to be a mill because it's so top heavy. So that'll just be a general work area. So what have I been doing? What have I been doing apart from selling off a a part of the workshop, what I'll show you. Well, regular viewers will have also seen this. My paint tin furnace I use to melt down aluminium. Because aluminium is so damn expensive and so is brass that, yeah, you have to melt your own to make it economic to do this sort of work. And it can be just as good as the, well, almost just as good as the bought stuff. Pretty good. Good enough. So this whole thing is getting a bit tired, so it's due for an upgrade. And I want one that will melt brass. That won't melt brass. Well, I've never had any success with that melting brass. So I just use a little standard LPG burner. So anyway, we'll move on. Plan B. Now regular viewers will have also seen this. The burner, LPG burner, that was sent down to me by a, a viewer. So uh, it's been hanging fire for a while, so today's the time to get moving on this project. So I'll show you what we're going to do. So this is the worthy donor for the new furnace. It's a 9kg LPG cylinder, an old ream, good thick heavy one, 3 mil thick. Been behind the shed for ever. So I've cut the top off. Now to do this, I didn't, I didn't video doing this because it was pretty boring, but basically you take out the tap and to get the, I had a hell of a job getting the tap out. It was frozen, couldn't move it. And eventually I had to cut off the, the top sort of ring thing that goes around here. Then I can get onto it with a big heavy shifter and a, and a sledgehammer and finally got it to let go but it's probably been in there for 50 years anyway fell ass over the head doing it and bruised my bloody arm and it was a real yep episode but we got there and then I cut it off with a, um, a thin angle grinder disc and so this will be the the hinge lid I mean lots of people have made these out of Made them out of 9kg nine, nine uh, cylinders. They're probably the ideal candidate. And I've got a piece of pipe here that I'm going to drill a hole and shove that in there for the torch, to, you know, the burner to go in. Now I could put it on an angle, just to get a squirrel effect, or I could just put it straight in like the existing one. I don't think it's going to make a lot of difference. I might just go straight in to keep things simple. And... Uh, I mean, there's X amount of heat going in there. It can, it can only stay in there, so whether it swells or goes straight in, I don't think it's going to make much difference, really. So I'll probably just shoot it straight in, I think. Right, this is all sort of stick welded job stuff. And then I've got to put some hinge, hinges on the back so the lid will pivot back. And then, of course, inside... I've got to line it with something. Now, I was going to line it with that ceramic wool that everybody raves about. 
until I saw the price, and it's like horrendously expensive. And I thought, no bloody way am I going to pay that amount of money. That's outrageous. And the old perlite one I've got worked well, so I'm going to use perlite again. And I spoke to sent Keith an email and said, what do you reckon about this? And he said, yeah, perlite works okay. But I'll use the perlite to line it with refractory cement rather than regular cement, you know, Portland cement. Uh, it's more heat resistant and it would last longer. I mean, the old furnaces last their ages, and that's just Portland cement and perlite. And it's crumbled a bit, but not enough that it's a real problem. Now, so I like it with perlite, and to do that, I'm going to I'm going to put a flower pot in there, and then run the the gooby goo around it, and then out she comes, and we'll have that amount of cavity. Whoa, hell, what's happening here? So first I'm going to put a layer in the bottom to form a sort of a, a bit for the, for the pot to come down onto. And then I can fill in the, the sides. So I'll do it in two stages. And also, as the furnace is going to have the crucible coming in, I don't want the crucible sitting on the perlite. It's going to bugger it up. So I've got a piece of old scrap steel here that I've machined a hole in the middle and I'm going to mount it down here somewhere and I've got a bit of pipe somewhere hmm. I've lost my pipe here it is I've got a bit of pipe I'll weld that in there and then I'll put the plate on top and weld around inside and that'll give a nice flat area for the crucible to sit on I might trim this back a bit first I'm not sure so this will be a stick welding territory once again. So yeah, weld that in first and then I can slip this over the top and then weld around inside. And then, uh, yeah, once I've done that, I'll fill up the surround with perlite mix, bring it level, let it harden. Then I'll put the flower pot on the plate and then I'll put perlite mix all around the outside, fill in the cavity. And that means the bottom bit should be pretty much done, apart from apart from hinges and yeah, that's it. So that sits on the that sits on its little legs. Now the lid. Here's the lid. Uh, I'll leave the hole in the top, leave it open. I don't think it's going to matter much, and um, give it a bit of a vent. I'll see. I'll see how it goes. So the crucible's going to come in. It's going to have a handle on it, like I'm using, so none of this messing around with Tom's racket, which looks, which looks dangerous to me. So I'll do what others have done and just see the slot down through here for the handle to drop down, or I'll chop a bit out of here and let the handle go in through here. I think I'll probably chop it down. Weld a tab on the inside for the handle to rest on rather than resting on the perlite. One second, this is where a simple stick welder is all you need to make this sort of stuff. And uh, then the lid, I'll uh, basically just fill it with um, perlite mix insulate the lid and uh, maybe put a draft, a vent pipe in there. I'm not sure. What do people think about vent pipe? Do you think I should seal this completely or leave that so I can open it? I could even put a bigger hole in the top because my existing one has got a, a bigger hole in the top. I've got a steel plate I put over it. That way you can take the plate off and just drop stuff in to top up the, top up the, uh, the crucible without opening up the whole shebang. So I might even do that. I might, I might cut a hole, and I'll see. It's going to be a bit awkward to do that, though, isn't it? You know, I mean, how the hell are we going to do it? I suppose the reciprocating saw would do it. Just run that around, or a jigsaw. Hmm. Think about that later. So anyway, that's where we're at. That's what Robbie Bob's up to, and uh, this is all machined to the exact size for the, for the. Uh, burner to go in so that's going to be a good snug fit 
and uh, yeah, that's the state of play. Okay, well, nothing to add to that. Uh, I'll see you next time when I've done a bit more on this. Okay, cheers. <laughs>